All right. Well, let's jump right in. Uh, you might hear me repeat myself if some more people trickle in, but my name is Troy Daniels. I'm one of the technical trainers here at Simplify Power. Um, today's should be a pretty short presentation. It's, it's not one of our longer ones. Uh, it's a little more targeted talking about power outages and building resilience through distributed assets and kind of a broad overview. Um, the actual presentation came came about uh, regarding some, some weather events. I believe it was the Texas power outages where we kind of honed in on, you know, grid tied backup power and, you know, what the benefits are beyond just the backup and things like that. Um, so without further ado, I'll just jump right in. So we're going to go over just a few, um, just a few slides here that are kind of the basics. And uh, from there, we'll, we'll move on to the more, the meat of the presentation. Um, if anyone's having issues seeing my screen or if it's showing in a presenter view or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, currently I'm showing that every, it is in the PowerPoint and everyone can see my screen. So feel free to type any questions or comments on if you're having issues with that stuff into the Q and A, it's on that control bar at the top. All right, so just a little bit about Simplify Power kind of to, to sum us up, safe, proven, and simple technology. Safe, this is non-toxic, non-hazardous, cobalt-free chemistry, uh, unlike other lithium batteries, no risk of thermal runaway with fire propagation. Uh, UL certifications, 1642, we're talking cell level, 1973, battery, 9540, becoming more and more common. This is actually the test protocol, or excuse me, 9540 being the uh, ESS solutions. So we're, you know, we're talking all-in-one solutions. This is becoming more of a, of, a, of a growing requirement when it comes to installing. So we do have that 9540 listing. We can help through if you have any questions about that. I know it's been coming up a lot. We can help you through which products specifically have that listing and how to get through inspection with that. And 9540A, which is actually the test protocol. UN DOT certified 9480, 98.3. SGIP approved if you're in California. Proven technology over a decade of experience and growth, deployed in over 40 countries, over 100 megawatt hours installed worldwide. We've actually been tested and validated by the US Army and Marine Corps. Um, special permission to fly, and we're actually manufactured here in the United States. Simple as we integrate with really any generation source, we try to expand our product line to meet different demands and different uh, use cases. Okay, so a little bit regarding kind of this ties, this is a slide I use on a lot of presentations, but this ties really well into this presentation specifically, talking about some of the I guess you could call it the problem, what we're trying to solve, what we're looking to fix. Escalating energy costs in the US, you know, US residential electricity prices have risen by 15% in the last 10 years. This trend is ex expected to continue, um, you know, and, and utilities are continuing to use things like time of use and surge pricing. And this is only gonna continue really. It's, it's very unlikely the trend will go the other direction. Uh, even the European electricity price is expected to increase 30% by 2025 as they phase out coal and nuclear plants. The cost range for diesel generator, uh, generated power in remote island communities uh, varies from five to a dollar per kilowatt hour. Uh, so again, you know, looking at their main source of power and, and what we can do there. Failing infrastructure. This is a big one, and this is really where this presentation came about, is talking about that failing infrastructure. 2010 through 2019 marked uh, the costliest decade on record with economic damage due to severe weather reaching 2.98 trillion globally. Since 2003, the average annual number of weather-related power outages doubled in the U.S., resulting in billions in financial losses. Um, and the U.S. electrical grid is aging with 70% of its transmission lines and power transformers that are 25 years or older. And of course, decarbonization, looking at, you know, how we can cut down on emissions, move towards solar, batteries, and clean energy, and how that ties into economic growth as well, and infrastructure itself. 
So some kind of big hit points here that we might actually even be talking about during this presentation is some of the kind of value stacks that I see when you're when you have a customer that approaches you with, hey, I want backup power. These are good ideas of, you know, of course, we can get you backup power. Plus, you might be able to mitigate some of these things like peak shaving and time of use. Peak shaving is a bit more on the utility or uh, excuse me, the commercial side of things from what I see. We're talking about these 15 minute intervals and these peak demand charges that the electric company um, will charge you. Very easy to mitigate these with a battery to cut out that peak demand and use the battery to basically not use the grid. Same kind of idea with time of use, though it's more related to time. It's, it's a specific time. Maybe the electric company has a peak demand charge or excuse me, a, an on peak from five to six or five to seven p.m. when most people are home. You can now utilize your battery and solar system during that time specifically versus using the electrical grid. PV alone tends to not be able to do this uh, unless you just get lucky. So really integrated solar plus storage is the direction towards moving to build resiliency and shield the customer from these financial uh, kind of burdens that the electric company will continue to put um, on customers. And definitely as infrastructure fails, it's only going to be more severe. Um, okay, so let's talk about solar without storage and understanding the limitations. Grid tied solar often comes at a very affordable price. As most of us know, I mean, when I got into this, it wasn't so affordable, but it is definitely now um, uh, with various options like leasing, financing, and buying outright. I mean, grid tied solar, easy as can be. You know, your panels cut off that electricity bill for the most part or offset it, I should say, and just get moving. So it really is such a basic thing these days. Adding solar panels to a residence can often completely cut out an electricity bill just on its own. And again, we're talking, I mean, most of the time there's still some sort of hookup fee and things like that, but just the solar panels typically can cut out that electricity bill. The, the, the point I would argue here is it's becoming less, it is becoming harder to cut out that electricity bill as we kind of see these demand charges and these rising rates just by putting a PV system in. What do customers typically not understand about their grid tied only system? Solar production will not work during outages and customers will still lose power the same as other houses without a PV system. Um, this has always been the, the common misconception I see with customers, obviously not really with installers, most, most if not all installers know this, but I do see a lot of customers still that are, are having a hard time grasping that and are a bit confused when their power goes out, when they, uh, you know, when the sun's shining and the grid goes down, they think that maybe they can still produce and they just can't. Having a PV system will most likely not protect a customer from things like peak demand and time of use, as I said, and I say most likely because again, maybe they just got lucky, maybe the production's just in the right time uh, or at the right peak demand. So but it's, it's not as reactive. And we'll, you know, looking at how we can use the battery and these inverters that are built in to react to these different features like time of use and peak demand, um, it makes so much more sense to have that integrated battery and solar storage uh, system, excuse me. Uh, solar production generated when loads are not active. Uh, so it is not stored, but sold back to the grid, which is great. And I think, you know, selling back to the grid is never a bad idea. That's part of being a distributed asset, I believe, is really you know supporting the grid. That being said, a battery allows the customer a little bit more flexibility on how they want to sell back to the grid. And if they want to use that specific energy that they've stored away in the day when they're not home, maybe. Um, you know, I think I've seen people say, well, if I have a battery, maybe I can't sell back to the grid. You can absolutely still sell excess PV back to the grid. And if you're looking at something like a lithium battery, like ours that holds that that power in very well. It doesn't have self energy loss where it's just you know self discharging over time. You really are just talking about one charge, and then you're selling your PV just as you normally would, and not needing to worry about charging the battery over and over until after a power outage. 
Okay, solar with storage. Obviously that's where we're going and understanding the benefits there. So adding a battery plus corresponding electrical equipment. So typically what we're talking about there is an inverter or a charger, maybe charge controller can greatly increase the benefits of a PV system while also providing benefits of the battery itself. What do I mean by that? Um, during a power outage, a customer can both utilize the battery to cover critical loads. This is almost always is set up automatically, creating a seamless transition in the event. So basically, you know, that transfer happens automatically. They go over to battery power. Maybe they didn't even notice the power went out oftentimes if everything is as smooth as possible. Um, and the biggest benefit of why I mentioned PV is often the inverter system, at least most of the ones we pair with, uh, can basically act as a temporary signal in order to keep those solar, uh, keep the solar production going and giving customers the ability to not only use solar now in batteries, but they can also charge their battery during an outage, basically creating a bit of an island and, and a self-sustained um, charge and discharge within their home. And as long as that sun comes out, even if the power is still out, uh, they, they will continue to charge and discharge the battery. So that is a huge benefit there of being able to bring those solar panels back online. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty about how to do that. This is more of just a, a benefits type presentation. If you want something a little bit more in depth regarding, you know, our batteries, the inverters we use, our ESS systems and their interaction as far as AC coupled and bringing PV back online, I would check out some of the other webinars, the more advanced stuff. Um, a battery system adds the ability to self-consume uh, power generated by storing it until the customer has a need for it while also not taking away from the ability to sell power to the grid for credit. I mentioned this already, but again, reiterating that point, you know, using that power that we have when we wanna use it, we're regenerating power, how do we wanna use that? It's stowed away. And the customer has more ability to say, you know, I want to charge my car when I get home, my electric car, but I want to use all the power that was produced in the day. Completely fine. And again, systems are even capable of financial safety from increasing rates and demand charges, such as peak load and time of use. And really, even just energy, or uh, sorry, cost cost of buying from the utility company. So if their rates go up and you have enough to cover your home for the next, you know, and your, your battery system is going to last, you know, 20 plus years and your solar panels too, then you're, you're covered there. You really have a bit of a more peace of mind regarding not having to worry about those rising costs. So what is a distributed asset? A distributed asset in the context, at least of this presentation, is referring to a battery-based system. Um, this can include the production and storage. So typically what I'm talking about on my end regarding distributed assets is um, on the home, the home side of things, behind the meter, um, you know, on, on the house side of that meter. We're not talking about you know, a big battery that's supporting a lot of things. We can talk about that. You know, we're talking about larger scale stuff. Um, but I'm really talking about those, those little home systems that do add up and build resiliency as distributed assets. Uh, it has numerous benefits for the home for the owner, as mentioned in the previous slide. However, it can also build resilience on a larger scale, cutting down on grid reliance. And that's for everybody, uh, the ability for reactive power. So, you know, if the grid, this is becoming a thing that, you know, some people are happy about, some people are not, but the idea that you know, the grid can say, hey, I need more power and pull off of your, your storage in order to support the grid itself. I have my thoughts on it. I'll keep them to myself, though, but I think there's a time and a place for it where it might make sense and it might not. You lower down the environmental impact. Uh, if, definitely if you have battery and solar, uh, you know, hell, you have battery, solar, and electric car, and you've cut down your footprint quite significantly. And the ability, the ability to know your energy will be available during outages and building security. The second bullet kind of takes away from that, the ability for the reactive power. But for now, we're still looking at most homeowners having control over their own storage and understanding where it's going to be when that power goes out.
All right, so let's talk about a little bit more on the logistics side. Adding storage to a grid grid tied PV system, new and existing systems. Oh, I, nope, didn't skip a slide. So some key definitions here, just very briefly. And again, I have more presentations. We'll be going to these a little bit more, but just for sake of the presentation, AC coupling, PV power is immediately inverted to AC power before reaching loads or the battery base inverter. From there, power can either go uh, directly to loads grid as AC power or can be converted back to DC to charge the batteries. AC coupling is really the mechanism that we look at when we're talking about retrofitting systems. And we'll get into that here in a bit. DC coupling. This is uh, the tried and true method as far as I'm concerned, I think has a lot of benefits. DC power just straight from the PV array uh, with charging regulations, typically from a charge controller in order to charge a battery bank before ever even being inverted to AC power. So it's a bit more of a direct line to that battery before being inverted. Um, we can talk a little bit about the benefits. I, I think I've got some slides later, but if it doesn't, I'll make sure to squeeze that in. But the difference in DC and AC coupling, there is some differences as far as functionality goes. Uh, things like true time of use and, and peak demand or peak shaving, really DC coupling is my way to go because AC coupling is still a bit finicky when it comes to that stuff. Critical loads panel, often called the backup panel. This is an additional AC panel added to a home that contains loads deemed critical that can not only be powered during normal operation, but also during grid outages. Um, smart panels are continuing to come up. We're talking about them more and more. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work with different smart panel companies and really looking at how smart panels can, I would say not get rid of a critical loads panel, but they get rid of the idea of a critical loads panel. What, the, what I mean by that is now we can have the ability to move all of our loads over to a critical loads panel and control them through a smart panel. I don't know if I have anything through this presentation on it, but if I do, we can go over a little bit more. Frequency shifting, don't worry too much about this one. This is just a mechanism used by battery base inverter to curtail and operate PV production during a grid outage. Okay, Simplify offers many different solutions for utilize, uh, can, that can be utilized to add a battery to an existing PV system. So if your PV system's already there, you've got customers that already have grid tied, and they're just looking to add on a battery system, easily done. And we've got a lot of solutions for that. Some installers may choose to purchase the batteries and inverter, not as an all-in-one unit. Most of these are the installers that have been doing it a little bit longer, don't mind uh, putting parts and pieces together. Maybe it's an indoor solution. They don't need that NEMA 3R rating that we have on our ESS solutions. Uh, this definitely allows for a little bit greater flexibility regarding sizing and what loads can actually be backed up. Um, Matt Walker, our other trainer, just did a presentation on whole home backup and backup in general and, and sizing systems for it. And the good news with our batteries is if you're not using one of our ESS or kind of all in one, or even if you really are, honestly, because we have the ability to add extra cabinets with batteries, you can scale up our batteries to cover those kind of whole home demands. Um, putting the parts and pieces together yourself can often cut down on cost, just to be honest. But we do also offer this ESS solution. Um, a huge benefit for our ESS, which is our access cabinet, is we have access units that are 9540 certified. So if you need that listing, go with that. We have some other options where you don't need the cabinet itself, where you can just do a battery with our smaller battery only cabinet and an inverter. But if you want the easiest solution, we do have these access units ready to go for the 9540 certificate or the UL certification and get things moving on those installs. I know they've just been challenging for people. I think uh, some inspectors are having some kind of hangups on understanding what they are right now. And uh, we're here to help is the, my point. So if you're having issues, if you've got questions about that, call us. We can walk you through which of our products are 9540 uh, listed. And uh, if you're having any issues with inspectors, we can help there too. These are NEMA 3R rated. So they're outdoor, they're for outdoor installation. And again, so I mentioned this, the time of use. So time of use and peak shaving, I really wouldn't recommend going AC coupled. Now, Solark is one of the inverters we use in our ESS. And Solark does say you can use time of use 
when when AC coupled, I would say rule of thumb, my general rule of thumb is if you have the ability to go DC coupled, so most likely it's not an existing PV system, it's a, it's a new system you're putting in, go DC coupled. And you'll save yourself a lot of headache as far as using things like time of use and peak shaving. If your customer doesn't care about that at all, don't even worry about it. Whoops. Okay. Well, I gave it away, but obviously, I mean, I'm just trying to like put in mind how easy these ESS solutions really are. I mean, here you've got, let's say an older solar system, or these look like IQ sevens. So, you know, you got some end phase inverters, you've got, let's say maybe a combiner here, or maybe it was an older system and you used just a, a panel to combine and then your main and your grid. I mean, really all you're doing is just putting the access unit in line there. There's not a lot of rework. It's pretty straightforward. The only addition you might need is to add a sub panel sometimes, but really you're just throwing this in line. That ATS, that automatic transfer switch is already built into these units. So it knows when to disconnect from the grid, from the main and cover those loads, as well as bring back online that PV um, and cover, um, loads with PV and battery. If we were to kind of expand this out, let's look at maybe, maybe this customer wants a ton of storage. They want just our battery only cabinets and a Schneider inverter with their system. Again, it's the same concept. You've just kind of pulled the parts and pieces out just a little bit. Um, a note is this access unit does have the ability to get extra cabinets with batteries as well. So that is, that is an option. All right, adding storage and PV. So what I'm talking about here typically is doing them both at the same time. When adding storage and PV to a new system, it, is, it often can be in the benefit of the customer to consider a DC coupled option. I push this agenda hard and I'm sorry if you disagree. I just really think that the DC coupled option is becoming more and more of a, of a better solution, especially as they grow charge controllers to be able to handle larger strings and it's not so challenging. Um, it really does allow for better utilization of features like time of use and peak shaving as I've just harped on over and over again. Uh, charging from the charge controller provides greater efficiency and more dynamic use of the PV system. Uh, the charging is not interrupted really at all when the grid goes down. Really, the system is not as much interrupted when you go DC couple. If you're in California, for instance, um, you know you might notice if you're AC coupled, you've got a five minute delay when the when the grid goes down, where your PV is not even online. The system can still sell back to the grid as an AC coupled system would. It makes no difference there. Um, Self-consumption can be used more seamlessly even when the grid is still present. This is a big one. AC coupled systems really aren't able to utilize self-consumption as much. It's more, um, it's more of an indirect kind of cause and correlation there. Whereas with the DC coupled, you can really say, hey, I wanna use battery before grid every single day. This is definitely the way to go if you're looking at things like net zero and stuff like that. Now, eligibility for the ITC credit towards battery uh, as well. This is DC coupled or AC coupled, but it's a good point to make. If you're putting in solar and battery at the same time, that ITC can apply for both the battery and the solar, as long as 75% is of, of the batteries charged from renewables. How they calculate that, I don't pretend to know. Um, and I'm not a, an expert in it by any means, but it's a huge benefit if you have a customer that's considering batteries down the line and you say, you know, hey, we can get this system in with batteries and storage now, and you're going to save a lot of money by getting that ITC applied to the entire thing. Okay, DEC coupling, I'm going to just make this clear because it's a bit confusing. These are not micros. These are just Tygo. Uh, you could call them either either optimizers or just the rapid shutdown uh, components. This slide actually is pulled from a, a presentation that shows rapid shutdown a little bit more in detail with this um, rapid shutdown button here. But DC coupling, pretty straightforward. It's actually interesting to look at it from the Solark perspective because the Solark has the charge controller built into the inverter. So PV in this case is really just going straight here where there's PV inputs. It's going to the battery before being inverted to the critical. 
and the main and the grid. So you can sell. If the power goes out, we, again, ATS automatically transfer from here and we cover that critical loads. Very simple stuff. All right. I know it was a little short and sweet. We're going to wrap up just talking a little bit about our IQ program. I like to mention every presentation, but if you are, uh, I'll skip over that. If you are an installer that's already installing our batteries, check out this program. We've got a ton more people getting added on every day. Um, really, you know, we're looking to highlight project uh, deployments and company throughout Simplify's marketing, uh, included in our IQ newsletter, which goes out every month. Uh, and you'll have some visibility on this where to buy page. So when, when customers are looking at who in their area knows how to install Simplify, you'll land there. It's not a requirement to install our batteries, but it's huge for the customers when they say, hey, this person went through this program and I know they're qualified versus kind of guessing and checking. So if you want to apply, super easy. It's right there um, on our page. You can go. It takes about five minutes. If you don't want to do that, I'll tell you what, we're actually at NAPSEP this year uh, and next week, I think. God, it's coming up quick. Um, I'm going to be there and our other trainer is going to be there. So stop by the booth if you want to learn more about the program. If you want to learn more about our batteries, too, we'll be there. Uh, we can get you signed up for the IQ program, though, in person and get things moving. All right. Um, I don't see any questions in the Q&A. If you have any last minute questions, go ahead and just type them in right there. Um, if not, uh, this was actually recorded, so we uh, sent out the recording afterwards. Again, we're going to be at NAPSEP, so check us out if you're going, if you're attending. We will also be at SPI in September, um, so we have a bit of a larger booth there if you want to stop by as well as a training. Um, we're always happy to uh, talk through things in person or over the phone. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have no questions, so I think we'll just wrap up there, but I really appreciate everybody's time and hope you have all have a good day. Thank you.